Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of GGRC. I'm RC and today we are checking out Thimbleweed Park on the Nintendo Switch, believe it or not. We're playing a point-click adventure on the Nintendo Switch. Weird, right? Uh, the important thing about Thimbleweed Park is it is the first new point-and-click adventure by Ron Gilbert, the guy who originally brought us Maniac Mansion, uh, Monkey Island games. You know, he, he's been a part of a, a lot of the uh, really big historic point-and-click adventure games from the 90s. And finally, he's back. He's done a new one. And as you can tell, it has a, a very Maniac Mansion look to it. So in Thimbleweed Park, you are, uh, I guess, solving a murder, right? There's uh, been somebody who's been killed. You're not sure who it is. Um, and so, so far, it's been a very, very interesting game. You actually play as two FBI agents. You play as uh, this woman here. I forget their names, honestly. And you could switch back and forth and play as this guy here, uh, which is pretty cool that you have uh, two perspectives on what's going on. Now, this guy at the moment is trapped in a uh, sort of a basement sewage area. Uh, I was captured by the killer. Or what we think might be the killer. I'm not quite sure. We haven't gotten down to the bottom of it yet. But he actually went back behind this diner and that's where he was captured. So we're probably going to avoid that with her for now. Originally I was going to head to this diner to do some questioning because that was next on the list. Um, but what's interesting about this version of the game is that when you start a game, you actually have um, a couple of options at your disposal. You can play sort of a... Uh, casual version of the game where things are a little bit more spelled out for you if you don't want to play that, you know, early 90s, you know, really tough style of uh, 90s point-and-click adventure, you know, where you combine a shoe with a bowling ball, you know, to, to solve a, a puzzle that's in a, a hut on a native island or something like that. You know what I mean? That kind of weird stuff like that. I'm sure that exists in this game, but if you play on casual, it gets rid of a lot of that stuff, and then you can just enjoy the story and point-and-click around and enjoy the game. Um, however, if you do want to play that version of the game, you can. That is an option. Uh, I think before we do some questioning here, though, I think it's important we go back. Maybe we'll go talk to, uh, these guys here. So, this game is not without its own quirkiness here. You got these characters who dress as pigeons. And even though they're both women, it's called the Pigeon Brothers Plumbing. They're both women in pigeon suits, though. So let's talk to let's talk to one of them. No time to talk. We have to fix this slight leak. What caused the leak? Well, the hydrotron's tube is obviously burned out. We could use a new one. A WC sixty seven? Yeah, we're out of that size. Must have been the signals. Yes, the signals. So that's a joke that the, the two pigeon sisters keep making throughout the game so far. They keep mentioning signals. Obviously, pigeons, signals, you know, <laughs> you know how it goes. We got a burnt out light up here, it would seem. Um, but every time that you talk to a character like that, they're, they're going to have some really weird, que uh, quirky humor, di uh, humorous dialogue. And um, when you talk to them, if they have a quest for you, that's going to add to your notebook here. When we look at our notebook, you can see that we do have some stuff on here uh, that they want us to do. So you can see uh, right above the second... Or I guess it would be the first green check mark where it says find rays. Above that it says pigeons need WC sixty seven two. So the notebook keeps track of what it is you're looking for and what you got to do. So as of right now, um, we've only finished two things. <laughs> we found mushrooms in the sewers, which wasn't even on my list to begin with. I just happened to do it when I was down there at one point, and we found rays. Not that we wanted to. Um, but we need to find a map so that way we can explore more of Thimble, Thim, uh, Thimbleweed. And I'm sorry, it's a bit of a tongue twister. Thimbleweed County. Um, you also have all these other things we got to do. So when we originally found the the body, you know we got to find. We know we got to find the murder weapon. We got to fingerprint the murder weapon. Um, and then there's all these different uh, things in the police station we got to use to try to solve the murder. So let's go check those out right now. Oop, you know, I ran right past it. Wasn't thinking, I didn't see it behind the, uh... Did 
didn't see it behind the van here. I'm also getting used to uh, all of the interesting options down here because you do have to use these. Um, one of the ve uh, last <laughs> things from the 90s, it's definitely a throwback game in, in that essence, you know, that you can use these to do different things. So, you know, you're going to use open door to go through the door. Now, you can't go up to certain things and hit skeleton. B. Ugh. Smells awful. So there, there is a, a default thing that they w can do. Um, but if you want something specific, like you can actually talk to all of these machines here. So you have the Bloodtron 3000, Fingertron 3000, and the Facetron 3000. So with all of these, we know we have to get different things to actually help them out with. Love this uh, toe with the toe, or these uh, feet with the toe tag here, sort of as the uh, foreground uh, item here, which is <laughs> really funny. Um, but yeah, we have the Facetron, so I don't know. We can, I haven't done this yet. We could try using the photo of the body with the Facetron. And what are the results? I guess we gotta talk to. So you can ask it silly questions like, what are the three laws of robotics? Describe your primary function. Uh, we already got a photograph of the dead body, so uh, let's see here. The face drawn 3000 trademark requires official government identification that contains a photograph of the victim. So we gave them a photograph. That's interesting. I gave him the photo. So I guess that's all we have to do. We don't get the full printout until... Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. So one of these things turned green, so apparently we're going to need another photo or some other piece of evidence to get what we need here. So we get two red on each one of these until you uh, enter things in. So we entered one photo, turned something green, and now we got to go and help things out. Did you see that? There's someone behind the walkway right here. Let's see if we can do this again. Let's see if I walk by if he'll show up again. Wow, he was just there. If you rewind this video, you'll see him there as I'm walking over. <laughs> Very interesting. So one of the other weird things about Thimbleweed Park is, you know, we're coming into it probably about an hour and a half into my, my playthrough here. Um, and when you get in here, you have the police chief. And the police chief is really quirky. Um, but he looks identical to the coroner. So they keep making that joke about, like, are you also the coroner? And he's like, no. I'm not the coroner, he's a nerd. And then the coroner says the same thing about being the, uh, you know, being the police chief. It's, it's pretty funny. Uh, so if, if you're really into quirk and funny humor and everything, this game is definitely for you. Um, let's talk to the a Restaurant 3000 here. Trademark. The Facetron 3000. Trademark. So we know that once we get light everything green on the other three machines, we in enter those three things into this, and then that's how we're going to come uh, with our uh, suspect. Uh, let's see. Yep, open this door. You also have shortcuts here, too. If you don't feel like using the... Uh, the actual joystick to move the mouse cursor around, you could use the D-pad and it'll actually select these one by one. So if you select that, uh, then you can use the top right and left buttons to select what you want to do. But I don't really want to open any drawers or anything. For some reason, it won't go to the door. There's a fingerprint book here. Oh, let's grab it. Do we get the fingerprint book? This has fingerprints for everyone in Thimbleweed Park. Certified Fingertron 3000 compatible. Cool. That's a good thing to grab. I guess I should probably be opening Just all these drawers, a right? Of files. Just a bunch of files. Let's open these up now, too. Just, Just to make sure. A bunch of files. And that's the thing with playing a point-and-click adventure. You gotta... Just a bunch of files. You gotta leave no uh, stone unturned, you know what I mean? You gotta find everything. But I think what we're gonna do first before we leave the town hall here... Not the police station, as I said before. It's a town hall. I think we're going to see if we can put the fingerprint book in the Fingertron five, uh, 3000. I almost said 5000, I'm sorry. 
These are old. The 5,000 has been out for a while, but these are still 3,000s. All right, let's use the fingerprint book with you. There we go. So he has one item there. All right, so we made a little bit of progress in this video already. And away we go. So I say we head back to the diner and do some, some questioning here. I want you guys to hear some of the, like, really uh, silly banter between all the characters. Because it's really where this game thrives. The, the story and the silly characters and the dialogue and everything. There's a lot of that. And the, there's some really good stuff. Um, Lock the bank doors here. There is a note. Uh, let's see. You pick up the sign? I want to read the sign. I don't want to pick that up. It says there we go. we're out of the old abandoned pillow factory. Back soon. Safely for our savings manager, Mr. El Polo. So for us to get access over to the factory, I believe we have to find ourselves a map. So let's see if we can find one. We originally uh, we're gonna pick up a map over here at the convenience store. And of course the joke with the movie uh, Tron, or the, the Tron 3000 thing keeps going. You got the movie Tron Beta Rent 3000. Redbox, anybody? Uh, but the Quickie Pal here actually had a thing for maps, but he said for some reason, I believe the sheriff took all the maps. Um, oh, you know what? Let's Let's walk over to the bathroom here. There was a, a really funny um, joke that was played on me here. So they they keep using red eyes in the in the background. So you see here, like when I first walked in this bathroom, I'm like, oh no, there's a, the bad guy or the monster, or whatever is over here. And uh, what's funny was I, I just used, uh, you know, the use on the light switch here. And when then I when I turned it on, I was like, oh, it's just a little <laughs> whatever it is, a little electronic thing, which I thought was pretty funny. Good little joke there, I think. The game is full of those. Lots of detail-oriented stuff. Alright, let's go into the diner, shall we? Welcome to the S&D Diner. Hey, just so you know, that article in the Thimbleweed Nickel about botulism was a smear job. So, what can I do for you, honey? I'm a federal agent. Know anything about the dead body? Not too much, just scuttlebutt from the morning breakfast crowd. And I don't want to get into trouble, especially with a crazy person like him. You're not talking about me, are you? Shut up, Dave. Don't screw with the feds. Tell us what you know. Okay, honey, but you didn't hear this from me. I'd look into that crazy clown that lives out at the old circus. Hmm. He's been out there since the circus closed down years ago. Never takes his makeup off. He's got serial killer written all over him. That is pretty creepy. It all happened about nine or ten years ago. Ah, so this is the second one of these, and this Ransom is... The I'm glad that we got here. Featured act at Stupendous Brothers Circus. He was about ready to go on stage and meet his well-earned doom. Big night tonight. Full house after my raunchiest Tonight Show appearance. I really got Johnny good, that little jackwad. It's his own fault for not being able to take a joke. I better get ready to go on stage and insult the crap out of these thimbleweed idiots. I just need to fix my hair, put on my makeup and clown nose, find my joke book. <laughs> so, um, one other thing that I did not get a chance to mention, and I was going to as we were playing, and I was really hoping that we would run into another one of these, but... During the main game, you play as the two federal agents, as you already saw, but you also get sub-characters you get to play as. We already played as one girl. I believe her name was Dolores, which is one that you're uh, a woman that you're looking for to question and talk to um, because she's related to uh, the aforementioned Pillow Factory family. Um, but she wanted to move off and be a game designer, so you played through her story. And it looks like now we're playing with Ransom the Clown. <laughs> what a name, right? Um, this is great, though. I, I love the flow of this, the idea that you're playing as the, you know, federal agents mainly to solve a murder, but you play as the actual characters involved that everybody keeps mentioning. Oh my god, his whole trailer tips over. Once he goes to the other side, that's really funny. Alright, so we got a to-do list with him. Let's see what we gotta do. So we gotta put on his clown nose, get his beeping joke book back, 
get on, get my clown fro looking beeping great, apply my beeping awesome clown makeup, go on stage and insult the beep out of those idiots. P.S. My life is amazing and beep you for being jealous. <laughs> Let's see. I want to look at these uh, shiny trophies. My circus poster featuring the amazing Ransom the Clown. That meanest clown of 1977 and 1978. Funny. Ransom the Clown. Ransom the Clown has sort of a, a crusty thing going on, it would sound like. It's an IOU. I, Carney Joe, loan Ransom the Clown $1,000 and will hold his joke book hostage until I get paid. All right, well, now we know who has the joke book. It's my lawyer's business card. Of whom we might need to call to get our joke book back. All right, so we want to use. It's my clown now, head. <laughs> I love that he's just like super insulting. What a what a great character. There Ouch. we go. That's tight. Glad I only have to wear it for a couple of hours. So there you go. We got the clown nose. That's the easy part. The other part, it's gonna be a little tougher. My hair is all it's finding everything I'm else. I'm not wearing my special ransom clown makeup. I can't go on like this. Get your together, clown. All right, where else can we look in this? Very cozy. Very cozy I may bed. Change the sheets today. Out we ransom. go. I'm glad I caught you before you went on stage. Autographs are a hundred bucks. Ransom, I'm your business manager and lawyer. I don't want your autograph. Okay, 50 then. I just wanted to let you know that your mistress is waiting at your house in Aspen. And your private jet is being fueled and ready to whisk you there when the show is over. Also, we have a deal worth millions to license a line of toddler Ransom the Clown talking insult dolls. Did he get the liability clause waived? Correct. They will assume all liability when the kids grow up to be beepholes. Good. <laughs> Toddlers start out as... It's not my fault they end up that way. Okay, fine. 25 bucks. I should have been a dentist. <laughs> you! <laughs> what do you guys think? Good clown? Bad clown? Pretty funny, though. I gotta say. Alright, let's see if we can... find out what we're gonna do here. Ah! Uh, you! <laughs> Not a very nice clown, huh? Oh, th he's got a swear jar. It's my ransom the clown swear jar with 138 bucks in it. My contract states that I'm the only one who's allowed to swear. Anyone else caught swearing has to pay up. That doesn't seem to work. Uh, let's see. Pick up. I just take the big bucks. How much we got? Look at it's my money. Exactly 138, 138 bucks. bucks. Alright, so we gotta get up to a thousand at some point here, right? Oh, we don't have a number, so. It's my lawyer's business card. Brent Bailiwick JD. Legal problems? We'll screw them for you. I'm in the phone book. This is great. Walk to goddamn makeup. It's my special custom made clown makeup. I am. Tired of putting it on every night. Sure as wish there were a more permanent variety. Now there's the face I love. <laughs> All right, so we got the makeup on. We got to get his clown fro looking awesome. Uh, let's see. Do we? Is he gonna wear the clown hat? I don't wear hat. I was about to say. Oh, here we go. Got to use the hair gel. My cloud fro looks great now. No, oh, yeah, not as frizzy. It does look pretty good. I gotta say, Ransom. All right, we gotta see Carney Joe, and then we gotta go insult everybody. I can't go on stage without my joke book. All right. I might forget my best. Let's go see if we can find Carney Joe then. Win big today. You got my money, clowny? That's Ransom the Clown. Asswipe. 
<laughs> okay, you got my money ransom, the asswipe clown? 1,000 clams or you're not getting your joke book back. Eh, yeah, serves you right for playing the duckies. I have your f money. Oh, so you decided to pay up. Yeah, here's your money. Now where's my junk book? Ah, uh, wait, are you messing with me? That's only 138 bucks in interest. Where's the grand you owe me? Yeah, thought you'd settle for less. Eh, uh, beggars can't be f choosers. Oh, yeah? Well, I choose to hang on to your joke book till I get the full 1138 bucks. Now, beggar off. Great. No waiting, take a shot. You got my money ransom, the ass white clown. So we gotta find a way to get more money, or we gotta talk this guy into giving us uh, the joke book without dealing with us, you know? Book. The crowd's waiting for me. I told you before, you ain't getting it till I get the thousand bucks you owe me for the duckies. Plus, $138 in interest. Where the f am I gonna get that kind of dough? I have a show to do! 138 bucks in interest, you f loan shark! You are putting a squeeze on me. Not my problem. So, uh, how's the old ball and chain and kids, huh? My wife's doing fine, no thanks to you. And so are the five kids. But they still cries themselves to sleep every night after that scare you gave them. Oh no. How many kids do you say you have? I have five kids, why? Oh, uh, nothing. All right. You, I'm out of here. Uh, there's no way to go from there. All right. So how are we gonna get a thousand bucks? It's fresh out of that crappy popcorn. Must be a huge crowd in the big top. Get. Oh, I'm sorry. It updated. We have to get a, uh, <laughs> one thousand one hundred thirty-eight bucks now. So that 138 bucks we got is not going to be uh, helpful. Let's go to the I exit. I have time to leave the circus. I have to get ready for my act. You. All right, clown will insult the mime one more time. Okay. Hmm. It doesn't seem to have a lot of options here. I'm wondering what I what it is I'm gonna have to do. Let's go in through the front, see if there's something we can do here. I can't walk in through the main entrance like a tuna headed pleb. I'm ransom the club. Let's see. Um Walk to swear jar list. Alright, let's let's look at the swear jar list. His new swearing coaches. It's the list of all the who swore here at the circus. That's great. I'm the only who can swear. Oh, that's not gonna work. Is there anything I haven't done over here yet? I got the makeup. I got the stuff there. I got 138 bucks. It's an IOU. Ransom the clown lost a thousand. Yeah, that's the IOU to that we've already Barney messed with. Joe. And I will hold his joke book hostage until I get paid. That doesn't seem to work. That doesn't seem to work. Hmm. Where did my business lawyer guy go? I want to. Got to talk to him, right? Lots of surprises. Try your skill. You got my money ransom, the ass white clown. I have your money. Hmm. Oh, so you decided to pay up. Yeah, here's your money. Now, where's my junk buck? Uh, wait, are you messing with me? That's only 138 bucks in interest. Where's the grand you owe me? All right. We got We've already been through that. Is there something in his home that we didn't do yet? 
the only thing we haven't gone back to. I guess we'll double check in there and see what we can find. It's a prototype Ransom the Clown doll. It's a perfect likeness of me. Well, maybe the nose is a bit too big. Pick up the clown. He's happy where he is, aren't you, little Ransom? <laughs> Lil Ransom, not exactly something you think you'd uh, you'd hear, right? Let's watch the hint line flyer. It says, "Need help playing Thimbleweed Park? Call the fully automated." So they actually give you a hint number you can call on that phone too, in case you aren't sure what you need to do next. Which I know at the moment I'm really not sure. It's 4468, so I don't know. Maybe this is a good time to use that to see how that all works. So I'm looking for context-sensitive stuff here, and I don't see anything. Let's give it a shot. Whoops. Wrong button. Welcome to the fully automated Hintron 3000 system. We aim to make your experience playing Thimbleweed Park easier. If you're ever stuck on a puzzle or don't know what to do, phone us. The hints will change depending on which part you are currently playing. If you can find a hint you're looking for, Hintron 3000, they just keep the 3000 right joke going. You can always just over and over and over again. again. My feelings won't be hurt much. How can I help you? Let's see. I need a hint. There is a different place you need to search to find more money. Where would you hide a lot of money? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, you for the hint. See, that is helpful. I like that the hint doesn't completely give it away, but I'm pretty sure with the hint, where would you hide a lot of money? Well, in the olden days, a lot of people stored it in their mattress, right? Let's see if it works. I don't want to pick that up. Uh, Very cozy. Said it's cozy. I may change the sheets today. I can't open the bed, right? No time for a nap. I have to go on stage. Um, j -j 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 pull. No time for a nap. I have to go on stage. No time for a nap. I have to go on stage. No time for a nap. All right. I have to go on stage. Where would you hide a lot of money? I thought. My housekeeper does a pretty good job of keeping this place clean. I thought it'd be hid under the mattress like olden times, but maybe not. Where would you hide a lot of money? I really don't know. That's where I, I know people of uh, of your <laughs> would hide a, a bunch of cash, right? I think we're going to dial this one more time just to see. And this is why I didn't play the hardcore version of this game. As you can see, I'm terrible at point-and-click adventures. I'd be looking at an FAQ immediately. Welcome back to the Hintron 3000. How can I help you? Let's try this again. Perhaps Ransom has a safe place in his trailer somewhere? Ransom has a secret wall safe in his trailer. Find it. A secret wall safe. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. See, that is not what I would have put together at all. So where is, where is the wall safe? How am I not seeing this? Oh, it. I'm. See, I didn't even put that together. Walk to poster over secret safe. Oh my god. It came off the wall. I didn't even put that together. Good lord. Pick up the money. Here we go. How much money we got? It's exactly eleven $1 hundred and thirty-eight dollars right. in unmarked bills. Great. Let's move on. Yeah, I feel pretty dumb after that one, right? 
That's what these games do, though. Sometimes you, you find a, you know, a way to progress, and you're just like, duh, I should have seen this. Yeah, take a shot at the target. But I totally didn't put together secret safe behind poster. I just kept seeing poster as the uh, uh, text that was popping up. So here we go. I have your money. A thousand bucks plus interest. Oh, so you decided to pay up. Yeah, well, not much choice. Now where's my joke book? Yeah, the jokes all suck. So how'd you get to be so famous with jokes like these? Yeah? What do you know about being funny? Uh, about as much as you do, which is nothing. Now, scram, clowny. You're scaring the customers. <laughs> Just shoot like a man or a little girl. So Ransom the Clown, very much like, uh... <laughs> very much like our friend Krusty the Clown from The Simpsons. That's what he definitely That's reminds me of. Joke book. No spoilers here. You have to wait for my show for the jokes. Oh, no, I thought we'd get a few jokes here. What is this guy doing? Oh, nope, he's going to the show. Okay. Thought maybe I'd be able to talk to him real quick. All right, did we do everything on the list? Yep, now we just got to go on the stage. All right, let's do this. And we get the actual Hello, show. This is great. Faces. I'm Ransom, the insult clown. I hope no one gets their feelings hurt easily. And if you do, it's your own fault for not being able to take a joke. All right, what do we start with here? We'll just start with the top one. You guys love that pillow factory. It's the lamest claim to fame a town has ever had. Paris has the Eiffel Tower. New York has the Statue of Liberty. And Thimbleweed Park has a pillow factory. You better hope to God that feather pillows never go out of style. Oh, he was right. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. I was amazed you weren't a bunch of fatsos. What with all this bottomless foie gras and champagne you have at the parties here. Then I ate at your diner. Their food is a better purgative than Ipecac. He's and letting him have it here. With a huge nose. It's like a roast. I say lady, but your beak suggests you're a toucan. You Damn. should have bought tickets for the show tonight, toots. You should be saving your money for a rhinoplasty. Oh. She's crying now. That's that's tough. Hey you, dude with the stupid mustache. You think you look like Magnum PI? A 70s porn star called. He wants his mustache back. Oh, well he got off pretty light actually. Oh, he's going to make kind of the kid in the wheelchair. All right, we got to hey, do you, this. Kid with a crappy wheelchair. Were you in a past life or something? Seriously, kid. You're in a wheelchair and you got a face that looks like that? God's definitely punishing you for something. Harsh. Hey, you, ugly old lady with the hairy mole. Or is it your parasitic twin? Whatever it is, I hope you bought a separate ticket. Because if it's big enough to ride the roller coaster by itself, it's not freeloading in my audience. <laughs> oh, wow. You will be forever sorry for uh -oh. what you've just said. I curse you to never be able to remove your makeup and to roam these circus grounds until the end of time. He Damn. He for another two hours, insulting everyone he could. Some people laughed because they thought it was funny. But most laughed because they were uncomfortable, and laughing is the best way to hide from the embarrassment of others. But after the show, in his dressing room, there wasn't going to be any laughter. Ha! I killed tonight! One of my best shows ever! I hope that ugly old lady with a curse breaks a hip on the way home. Now to get this makeup off, hop on my private jet, and go see my mistress Cindy in Aspen. Yeah. The clown has a private jet. What the? F this makeup isn't coming off. <laughs> Come on. As much as he tried, his makeup wouldn't come off. That old lady wasn't just any old lady. She was Madame Morena, mistress of the dark arts. When she curses you, it's not an empty threat. It's something Ransom was just now finding out. This makeup of that old... <laughs> My lady! <laughs> Ransom 
handsome, I've got some bad news. What do you want, you oh, bold, no. greedy little... Can't you see I'm having a problem? Grab a tissue and some rubbing alcohol and help me, you... Your private jet crashed while trying to land. Your wife found out about your mistress, and she's taking everything you own except the house in Aspen. There was a fire in Aspen, and your house burned to the ground. The toy and doll licensing deal is dead, and they're suing you for breach. And one more thing. I quit. What? Wow. And go beep yourself. Yeah, that deserves a long beep at the end of that. Good God. What a way... <laughs> Man, what a way to end and that one. Everything fell apart. Clown is such a creep. And you should go arrest him for murder. That's an interesting story. We'll go check up on him. So now you can see the uh, notebook is shaking. And we now have a new objective here to go talk to Ransom the Clown. But I believe we still have some stuff we got to do in the diner here, right? We had to talk to her. There's a radio. It's turned off. Alright, well... That's okay. I think we can talk to this guy back here, too, maybe? I don't know, sure. awful. Not like the New York dogs I'm used to. Ah, yeah. A good New York hot dog, right? Chicago dog, preferably, in my opinion. But you know what? We've, uh, we played a little bit as her. We played uh, Ransom the Clown's story. So let's actually switch over to our other guy. ...and solve this murder so I can do what I need to do. Let's see if we can get him out of the sewer before our time is up here. Alright, so what I did find was there was a, a dime down here at one point. And if the I... Only thing I'd, the, on, the only thing I'd get Oops. for poking around these boxes is a case of sneezes. Didn't mean to activate that a few times. But I found that there is a phone over here. An emergency call. Is it Rick Savage? Octotiggy? Comics? Octotiggy comics, I'm not sure. But anyway, we have a, a manhole down here, which I cannot interact with. We have a circus flyer. We have an empty whiskey bottle. There's a trippy mushroom we picked up earlier. Now, this dime we can use with the payphone, but I don't know if we're supposed to dial a specific number. We didn't really interact with this area here. We got a big gate. Can we open it? Let's find out. I can't budget. Can't budget. But it's the only thing interactive in here. You found the body uh, by a uh, a sewage drainage area. Here's a skeleton just hanging its hand out over here. Extended in friendship or supplication? Huh. Hard to tell. Hmm. Certainly looks fake. We do have looks a valve. Like this valve has been welded into position forever. So we're not gonna be able to touch that. We need like a crowbar or something. This valve has also been welded into position. Okay. Looks fine to me. I can see a quickie pal store. Oh, he's under the quickie pal store. I can okay. see a quickie pal store. Can I open this? I can see a quickie pal store. Yeah, I want you to. I want you to open this. It's sealed shut. Sealed shut. No way to open it. All right, let's see if we go back to her, if we can get over to where he's at and get him out. So he is right here. I can't open that. Looks pretty dark down there. Wait, I see Reyes. Agent Ray, I have sort of a situation here. <sighs> of course you do, rookie. <laughs> what the hell happened? You better not be screwing up my case, Reyes. I'm not. I swear. I was in the alley behind the diner looking for clues, totally following agent protocol, and I was jumped. They knocked me out cold. Are you okay? No injuries that will require you to stop working the case? I don't think so. Damn. Not bleeding out and about to die or anything? I thought the playable characters couldn't die in adventure games. That depends on who is making them. But unfortunately, I think you'll be alright. 
That's the other thing, too, is some of the comedy in this is very self-referential, even to the point of breaking the fourth wall, which, which is fun and welcomed in this game because it's so quirky. Did you get a look at the guy who whacked you? No. They hid me from behind, so I never saw their face. Might not have even been a guy. Good point. A girl could easily take your scrawny ass out. Hey! So we're looking for a suspect of unknown gender, age, race, height, and weight. Great job as always, Agent Reyes. How's the smell down there? It's not pleasant. Try not to get any crap on your suit. If I have to spend the rest of the evening with you, I prefer you not smell like raw sewage. I think it's a little late for that. How's the rat situation? They haven't gnawed your face off yet, have they? What? Rats can do that? Oh, sure. Rats love eating human flesh. diablo! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta help me! I'll do what I can. In the meantime, sit tight and tuck your pant legs into your socks. That's how they get you. <laughs> Try not to panic, Reyes. P panic? I'm not panicking. Just because there are flesh-eating rats and raw sewage in here, and gators, germs, toxic fumes, and a risk of the tunnels collapsing. So yeah, I'm totally not panicking. I am as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be here if you need me. So there you go. I, I think that is a, a great look at Thimbleweed Park. Um, it is a game that I am uh, definitely enjoying, having a lot of fun with. Uh, as you can tell, I didn't talk a whole lot this episode because I feel like the dialogue in this game is what makes the game. It's super important to listen because the jokes are great, the dialogue is witty and fun, um, and you're going to miss clues if you don't listen in, you know? Um, but overall, I... Uh, I'm having a ton of fun with this. I, I think it's a it's a great little game, and uh, I definitely suggest checking it out. It plays really really good on the Switch. Um, I think it might be slightly better if I was on PC because you have the control of this thing with the mouse, um, but it still controls very very good on the Switch. So if you're looking for a good uh, portable game to play, um, or you can play it at home, you know when the Switch is docked, this is a great one to play. Actually, in portability mode, you can tap the screen any of these items here to do different things. So if you don't want to use the controller, you don't have to. You can just tap the screen. Um, so there is that aspect, too. But regardless, yeah, having a ton of fun with this, definitely recommend checking it out. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to check out some of the other GGRC episodes. And if you're feeling a little retro, why not jump into the Quake Grave, where you can watch me play through a lot of different custom maps in Quake. Enjoy!